Hi everyone, Larry Satchwell here at the picnic tables. Bird feeders right behind me. What a beautiful, gorgeous day here in Georgia. I was contacted a couple months ago by the LK Bird Feeder Company. Wanted me to review their bird feeder with the camera and 1080 HD camera, auto capture, all the good stuff. And I put them off for several weeks. I only agreed to do the review if I could be completely honest, and they agreed to that. I ordered the product on a Friday morning. It came Sunday afternoon. Really quick delivery. Let's open it up and see what we've got. Of course, I'll leave the link below. And there it is. It has the built-in uh, photo cells for charging. It detects motion. It has a UBS cable. It's powered by a rechargeable battery, 5200 mAh. The color is blue. The camera is 2.0 megapixels. And the uh, video is 1080 HD. It has a built-in microphone and it's waterproof. Its temperatures are minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. I think we're going to meet that in Georgia here. It's weather resistance, wireless, uh, 2.4 GHZ Wi-Fi. The diagonal has 130 degrees and horizontal 94 degrees, vertical 40 degrees. So diagonal 130 degrees, that's a wide range. Well, I can't wait any longer to see what we've got. Let's open it up. Phone protection. And, of course, a danger here. You want to keep this away from children. Suffocation. Everything has foam on it that needs to have foam on it. It's pretty. Well packed, I have to say that. Wow, a 64 gig SD card. Wasn't expecting that. Here's the UBS cable. The mounting bracket. Has a drill sticker. All the hardware. Let me sit it right here. Yeah. A beautifully illustrated guide. I'm going to step away and see what I need to do to install this. My plan is to install it down in the garden. I must say, very impressed with the way it was packed and the instructions. So let me see if I need to charge the battery and go collect some tools. I find this interesting. I was given a sticker here, but the holes aren't marked in it. So you have to mark the holes here where the screws go. Not a big deal. Well, I'm back, had some lunch, uh, let this charge for a couple of hours. And the sun is in and out now, but it's still a gorgeous day here in Georgia. 
I'm going to get ready to put this right here on my garden shed that houses the uh, pond filter and some other tools. Let's get started with some assembly. So I've put a little work table out here and I've gathered everything I need. You're going to find four of these screws. That's going to go into the wall for the bracket. Three of these screws with the big washer head and this little plastic case, that's going to hold the cam camera on secure. Two, I will call these medium-sized screws and two tiny screws and this thing. This is important. Don't lose this. We're going to need that to set up the camera. Now, let me tell you a couple of things I really like about this. One is that it has permanent free use of recognition software. Unlike some other bird feeders, you have to buy a subscription. That's not the case here. The other thing is a full one year warranty with free replacement if the product doesn't has quality issues at all. It's waterproof and we're getting some rain tonight and tomorrow morning. So that's going to be a great test and I'm going to, not going to put this video out until I see what the rain does to it. The other thing I really like is where you put the feet in. It has, it appears to be a silicone gasket here and that's going to keep the rain out. Now, if you're concerned about squirrels getting in here and they'll find a way the squirrels are going to be around the bird feeders, you can add these two tiny screws into the cap here. Now, I am not real concerned about the squirrels getting in here because this is going to be on my garden shed above four feet. But I am concerned about losing those screws and this little thing. So my plan is to use a little packing tape and that way I will always know There we go. I will always know where those things are and it won't interfere a bit with putting the lid on. Still a nice tight fit. So let's get started here. I need these two medium sized screws to put the perch on with. And those will go right there on my magnetized screwdriver. And it will be a lot easier for you to do if you're not trying to do it upside down and backwards just to engage those screws. And once you get one on, it's a lot easier to engage the other one. And of course, if you needed to use a power screwdriver for that, no problem. But it just takes a few twists here. So go back and secure that one. Now I'm going to hang my feeder in this orientation. So this little plastic thing is already on here. No need to change it. But if you are going to use the other orientation, say you want to put this on top of a fence post, all you need to do is, again, use your Phillips screwdriver. This little clever plastic thing already has molded into it a way to hold the nuts so you don't have to go find a, a pair of pliers or a, a uh, wrench. And you just flip this onto the other side. So it's time to drill some holes. One piece I did fail to mention are these little plastic inserts. I'm putting mine into wood and I've already added a little extra piece of wood here because the walls on my shed are very thin, half inch. But if you're going to put it in stucco or brick, they've also supplied these little plastic inserts. Of course, you'll need to drill a bigger hole, but uh, that's no problem. So if you're putting it on your house or on a garage that has stucco or brick on it, you'll need those. I have an eighth inch drill bit here, and I've already put the sticker on here that tells me where to drill. So it's just a matter of drilling four holes. So using the four screws that are sharp, I like to put, I'm going to in this case put it in the top. 
That way I can engage my screwdriver here already and just aim for that top hole. And once you get a couple of once you get a couple of threads in the uh, wood, it goes in real easily. Now I'm not going to tighten that top screw all the way. I want to make sure my template is accurate. And sometimes, it's just my experience, maybe it's my skill, that's not always the case. So if you leave them loose, you have a little bit of wiggle room to find that hole you just drilled. So far, so good. And there is that fourth hole. So I'm in good shape here. I can go ahead and tighten this one all the way down. And then I'll go back and just put the other ones all the way in. Kind of like changing a tire if you've ever done that. You tighten up one lug nut and then another. And there it is. That feels pretty secure. Now that I have it all assembled, it goes right here. And this little plastic disc is going to go up through the other plastic. Maybe hard to see, but there's a little pin here. So there's only one way. There's a hole in here. One way for you to put that on. So you can't mess it up. But before I put the burn house up, I think it'll be easier to go ahead and set the camera up. And then it'll be ready to go. So let's do that next. I tried to do this part down at the garden where my workbench is, but the sun was overheating my camera on my iPhone, and I couldn't use it. So we moved back up here to the picnic table. Here's the QR code. It comes right on the box. It's also in the instructions on how to connect to the Internet. Here's the part I found confusing. If I go to my camera here on my iPad, you can see the QR code comes up, wants to take me to the website. But when you get it, it's Bird Lover formal version, scan QR code to download. Now I'm not tech savvy enough to know how to scan this when it's in my camera. Now, if I used my phone and my iPad in conjunction with each other, I could scan it. So I couldn't figure that part out. So instead, I went over here to the App Store. I typed in Bird Lover. And there it came up first. You see the little icon? It's the same as it was right up here on the thing. So I'm going to download that. I'll open it. And then you go through all the user agreements. You set up a uh, your thing, your email address, your user ID. I do like the fact that they give you, uh, they have to double uh, satisfy this. So you have to put in your email address and then they'll send you a code. And so I'm going to go through all that process off camera so you can't see my passwords. Once you set that up, you'll get something that looks like this. Notifications. I'm only going to allow it uh, a schedule summary or don't allow. I'm going to allow them right now. And Bluetooth, I'm going to allow it to find my Bluetooth. So I'm done. So now I need to add a device. So I'm going to do that and then got it. All right. My camera is offline. So I'm going to try to do this so you can see it. I'll move the camera down here and take out the little protection here. So I'm going to plug in the solar panel, and that goes in right there. There's an on-off switch right here. So I'm going to turn the camera on. 
You can see it's on. I need to reset it. Remember this little thing I told you was important? Right next to where you plug in the solar panel is a reset button. You push that down for five seconds. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Now that's supposed to be flashing. There it goes. All right, so my kid, you heard it come and now it's flashing. You're going to get a thing that says the bird lover would like you to find your network. So I'm going to allow it. Comes up smart camera. So it's establishing an encrypted channel. My smart theater detected movement. So it's already picking things up. Let's take this away and see what happens. I'm going to look inside the camera. I'm going to go. <laughs> it keeps clicking. I'm going to go to the uh, um, my app. And then I can see the motion has been detected. I go there. And there I am setting everything up. Once you set this up, you'll get the prompts. The problem I had was finding that little spot where you reset it. There I am. But once I found that, everything is simple. So what we need to do now is, first of all, I'll unplug it and replace this thing, and then we'll go put it on its perch and see what happens. As you can see, that sun is very bright. So that's going to go on right there. Easy peasy. Here's the little hole I need to find. And that's not a problem. So those three screws with the big heads go on next. And again, with a Phillips screwdriver, they simply screw right in. Now, if you tighten these down hard, you can't rotate the bird feeder. I like to keep it a little bit loose because now I can rotate it and easily put the seed in. I'm going to be using the Audubon blend. This is for cardinals, the cardinal blend, uh, but it, it'll attract a lot of other birds that we have in our area. Well, I made some suet with this, but that took almost the whole package. That's not going to have to be refilled very soon. I'll snap that lid back on, rotate it back where I want it. And now we'll just wait for our first visitors. Once I see what's going on, I can adjust the camera here. But with that wide, what was it, 135 degree angle, it's going to see almost the entire garden here. So it'll take some adjustments, but I'm looking forward to it. And I'll post those first visitors. And of course, follow up videos, follow up videos to come all the time. So overall, the direction is a little fuzzy at times. But as the bird feeder goes, five stars. I appreciate you sending it to me, and I'm looking forward to using it and getting a lot of good videos off of it. Thanks for watching.